Hi everyone. You may remember that a couple of weeks ago it was revealed that Sharia courts are now operating here in Britain with the full backing of the law, even though they discriminate against women as a matter of course. And what this means is that those women who are intimidated into using these courts, as some of them will be, and everyone knows it, they will now find that they have the full weight of the British legal system lined up against them alongside the patriarchal bigotry in their own communities. Those women who are cheated out of their just entitlement in these places, as some already have been, will find that they have no recourse to the real law to put things right. In other words, we are now accommodating Saudi Arabian legal principles here in Britain, just as we accommodate their corrupt business practices and their threats against our national security when we try to investigate them. If you live in Britain and if you think these courts are a bad idea, please sign the petition to which I have linked asking that they be abolished and that this poison be removed from our society and that we revert to the rule of civilised law with equal rights for all, if that's not too much trouble. You know, over the last 11 years of this Labour government that we've had in Britain, the British people have seen their society subjected to social engineering on a massive scale by a misguided and arrogant liberal elite who, in their eagerness to fragment the fabric of our society, have actually succeeded in giving civilised values a bad name. Tolerance and diversity are good things on paper. I'm sure we'd all vote for tolerance and diversity, but in practice they've become a nightmare of double-think and lies, where the most unreasonable people in society are encouraged at every turn to be even more unreasonable. A case in point, just this week, some idiot from Saudi Arabia is being allowed to sue a supermarket because he was required to handle alcohol as part of his job, despite being told this when he took the job, and despite the fact that thousands of Muslims in Britain handle alcohol every day when they sell it in their corner shops to people like me. I do find it quite ironic that Islam forbids intoxication when you consider how many Muslims are seemingly so intoxicated by their religion, especially in Saudi Arabia. So it was no surprise to me to hear that this idiot was from Saudi Arabia, because I think we all know that that entire country is mentally ill. The Saudis would have us believe that theirs is the purest form of Islam. Well, I don't know about that, but it's certainly the nuttiest form. It's barking mad, if you'll pardon the canine metaphor, and it's pig ignorant, even if you won't. It's got to be just about the nastiest belief system on this faith-obsessed planet, and it's a cowardly one as well, enforced by cowardly men who are afraid of women and whose only language is ultimately violence. They're absolutely pathetic, and history is already laughing at them. If the term human rights means anything in this world, then one day the Saudis will pay out as much in compensation for their abuse of women as the Catholic Church has for its abuse of children. And I'll certainly drink to that. Because I was out uh, earlier today, coincidentally, buying some beer, uh, not because I enjoy beer particularly, uh, but because I know it offends Islam. Although it didn't seem to bother the Muslim shopkeeper I bought it from, maybe he was just being polite. Anyway, as I was leaving the shop with my beer, two women happened to walk past wearing burqas. Nothing too unusual about that, not anymore, not in London anyway, and nobody really paid it much attention, apart from one small child who I overheard describing them to her mother as letterbox ladies, which I thought was actually quite inventive and rather charming. But of course, it was also deeply offensive. So we had the child put to death. No, not really. But it was lucky that neither of the women actually heard the offensive and insulting remark because obviously each of them had her head encased in a cloth sack. So that was good because it meant that the police didn't have to be called, no human rights people needed to get involved, and nobody required any financial compensation for hurt feelings, which I thought made a very pleasant change indeed. And of course, as a result, we didn't have to listen to any propaganda sound bites from some Islamist Saudi shill at the Muslim Council of Britain. So all in all, it worked out for the best. And it just goes to show that these things don't always have to end in tears. Peace, especially to everyone who remembers to sign the petition.